Welcome to Wrestling in 60, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Wrestle with the best. A show where we present the best matches from around the country's premier wrestling conference, the Big Ten. Here at number six. Two, Drake Ayala, the three-time state champion out of Fort Dodge, Iowa, going up against the NCAA runner-up, Matt Ramos out of Lockport, Illinois. Center. Ayala, he Center. does a really, really good job of yes. staying in this position. Oh, yeah, yeah. You saw that on the edge, a little quick shot by. But Ramos, and we talked to Tony Urslander a little bit earlier earlier this week, and the matches that Ramos lost, he you know he kind of got slowed down and didn't really get to his offense and his explosiveness. So you look to see him get some of that early in this match. Came out of the gate fast. Matt Ramos did, pushing out. Uh, Drake Ayala and they called backing up and the stall warning against Ayala. Ayala has a stall warning. Yeah, Ayala just needs to stay solid. Ayala. Their little blood time for a cut on Ayala, but uh, Ramos got uh, shot out of the cannon there and got good pressure. He's getting the pressure Center. here. He wants to work up. Ayala likes to get those shots low and Ramos kind of keeping him from it. Yeah, I mean, you saw the blood time. Well, welcome to Iowa wrestling, right? I mean, as soon as he got his eye cut open, he's right back out there. Really good pressure by Ramos, keeping center. keeping his butt, you know, towards the uh, center and keeping Ayala on the edge. And he's got to be careful he doesn't get warned for stalling. Center. Already with one warning for star stalling, Ayala. 0-0 zero, zero in the first period. The first match in the meet, number two, Iowa hosting Purdue Boilermakers. Yeah, somebody's got to create to action here. I think, you know, the, the aggressor in this match is going to win. You know, one versus two, obviously, it's going to be a tight match. But Offense I think the aggressor, you've seen Ramos early put on that pressure and keep, you know, Ayala towards the edge of the match. He's really got to be careful of giving that second stall call and, and, and giving up that point. Ramos, that head position, state Maddie. champion Back in the uh, head position. Illinois, Lockport, Inside, Illinois, coached ahead. by Josh Oster. Started at Minnesota, red-shirted, worked out, and uh, took a medical red shirt and worked with the Gopher Wrestling Club before transferring to Purdue, where he went his red shirt freshman year as 133, and then down to 125 last year, and was the runner-up in the NCAAs. Yeah, Ayala, you saw him try to work for that front headlock to open up his lower attacks, and I think, you know, a couple more of those and a good reattack there by Ramos. He might be able to get to the legs, but as of right now, it kind of feels like these guys are feeling the moment a little bit and trying to measure each other. But as I said earlier, their aggressor's going to win this match, and we really haven't seen much offense out of either guy. 25 seconds left in the first match. First matchup, 125 pounds, Ramos and Ayala, number one versus number two. Yeah, now you see now you see Ayala kind of pick it up a little bit and putting pressure of his own. And you know, obviously short time here, but Ayala doing a way better job of keeping his butt center and controlling that center of the mat. And we wind it down the end of the first period. 0-0. Zero, zero. News Ramos takes uh, bottom to start. Yeah, and this is where Ayala's kind of be careful and he lets him go right away. But you know, Matt Ramos, we saw last year cra crazy, I think, quarterfinal win. My time, my time. And he just got poked in the eye, I think. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Quick yeah. escape little, yeah, for... Little, little eye poke. Quick escape for Matt Ramos. Out 1-0 now as we get started in the second period. Yeah, as I was saying, he's so explosive and can score, score points really from any position. So Ayala, really solid job. I think he realized the situation and kind of let himself, uh, you know, let him go. But I, I, with the three-point takedown this year, I think the escape doesn't hold as much weight. So Ayala's got to get back on his offense if he wants, you know, he wants to win this match. Got the two-on-one there trying to set up so that he can attack the legs. Got a good slide by as well. There's another attack right there, Tim. And Iowa fans want a stalling, but I think he's got to do a little bit more than that. And, and Ayala really can't w wait to the end, because that's what Ramos does so well, is stealing those matches at the end. You saw him do it so many times at the NCAA tournament. Well, you'd like to see Ayala get to his offense as he gets back to that two-on-one. And get to, he's had a nice low ankle attempt. He's got to just do a little bit more to get to that leg. Yeah, that overtie in the wrists is keeping Ayala at bay. 
and uh, hey, Ramos Sandra really Sandra isn't Sandra reaching, Sandra is he? Yeah, it's, it's, it, almost, it almost looks like he's, he's timing that shot and he wants to look for a reattack. And I think reading this match a little bit, no, I, no guy's really putting that pressure on. I think either guy, you know, you like to see out of Ramos, you like to see it out of the, you know, the home wrestler Ayala to start use that crowd a little bit and you know, get Ramos backing up. But we really haven't seen any attacks. Oh, beautiful double. Nice double by Ramos. Three points, takedown at the 15 second mark. Nothing better than a late takedown in a period and a ride out. Can he get it done? Ramos trying to ride out with no score for Ayala. Oh. And he does it. Jordan Burroughs asked blast double, some would say. Again. One. Quick escape, very important for Drake Ayala. Puts his first point on the board. Well, that's the beauty of the three-point takedown. Even with that stall call, Ramos is still okay here. Obviously, he doesn't want to stall out, but I think, you know, knowing the situation, uh, he's got to, you know, got to be careful, you know, not to give up any crazy calls and be smart here. Get those wrists, Get those wrists, Get that wrist. Finish this match! Good shot by Ayala. Wow, beautiful outside step. High crotch. Wow. Crazy position here, Tim. I don't know. <laughs> Iowa fans wanted three, but I'm not sure. He's got to get something here. About a minute left. And you want to see Ayala step behind that foot. He cannot let this position get away from him. Ramos is so good here. And you don't want to see him drag him out of bounds. Oh, almost on the edge. Wow. Obviously, Ramos escaped right on the edge. And now he's only got 30 seconds to make it happen. 30 seconds left in regulation. Four to one lead for Matt Ramos. A takedown would tie it up. A takedown and ride out. Can he match what Ramos did in the second period? Ayala trying to get past the hand, hands defense. Yeah, yeah but I, I misspoke earlier. It's Ayala that had the stall call, so Ramos really, I mean, he can really do whatever here. Eight seconds left, and Ayala, oh my goodness. Oh, just, just had it. Great action there. Purdue gets on the board first. We'll be back with more top matches on Wrestling in 60. And now we'll look at number five as we continue the countdown. Dominant, looks big, and uh, but this is a, right, probably the best opponent he's gone against here the whole time. Aaron Nagal here jumps back in no on control. a single leg no control, right gentlemen. there. And the one thing you don't want to give is a great leg rider and a guy who can turn you Quick, easy takedown to begin with, and now Ragason's back in on his shot. See Nagao Ragason trying to cut the, the tide. Trying to cut the corner. Nagao coming up through the crotch to neutralize Ragason. And stalemates. Good action by both of them. So, you know, Ragason, you know, spent a lot of time in the practice room, but he's wrestling a little high right now, and Nagao is getting right to those low shots. It's the second time he's been in on the leg. Waterfall position here for Ragason. Yeah. He's real tight on that, uh, that the left ankle of Nagao, and now Gao trying to make the turn. Now he gets both ankles at this stage. Now he goes and gets a little bit of elevation, but you're right into the legs of, of Nagao, and Nagao is, that's where he wants you to be, and he's right into a crab ride for a three-point takedown. And he's gonna slide the boots in, and this is where Aaron Nagao is just a hammer in this top position. Boy, Nagao put the cheese in the trap on that one. Puts him right into where he wants to be. Nice job there from Ragason to get the escape. Oh, now diving in on a single leg is the Wolverine. We should have Similar situation that we saw before with Nagao scoring, hitting that corner. Yep. Rolling through here. Again, elevation. Now he's got the inside part of the leg. Come on all the way back to the middle of the mat. There you go. Time. All the way to the middle. And But did not anticipate the roll through of Nagao. Danger. One, two. Nagao's in danger. 
Ferguson spins around behind and gets the takedown, and he meets it four to three. Fun first period. We should have started the meet with these guys. What are these guys thinking? <laughs> these guys came to scrap. Two on one. Ferguson is looking for a tilt. Right. Coming back in and driving through. One, Good escape by Nagal. Four, four. Crowd is into this one. Take a look at uh, Ragason. He wants it. The reason, one of the reasons why we're seeing the scoring we are that Nagao likes to lead that right leg, and that's the one that uh, you know Ragason likes to attack. 20. 20 seconds, first period. A little bit of a breather here for both guys. Both these guys came out on fire. Over under position here for Ragason. Both guys getting to their offense in the neutral position. Nagao started things out. Look at this action that we're seeing right here. Then you see that it puts goes right into that crab ride, right where Nagao likes to be. So he kind of helped Nagao with really get that leg in. Ragason gets a good escape. Now Ragason with his shot, that over leg like that, grabbing over, over the top of the leg. Come underneath and hit the half Nelson. I think it's a great way to keep him there. Ragason with that uh, three-point takedown and both guys with quick escapes. That's what's been the impressive part about it too. Not necessarily the takedowns, but the quick escapes. So that's Michigan's first takedown that went by Ragason tonight for green. the Wolverines. Still got green here. Still got green here. Ragason building his riding time. He remains in control. Improve! Improve! One! Two! And there's that drop down three. count. He came back out of it. Now he's in kind of a vertical position, but at the edge. Came onto that into a flurry of action. Quickly to his feet once again to go off the whistle. Stay in the top position right there, sagging back. Nice job by Nagao, Still lowering green. his level. Still green. Still green. Still green because it's over the top right there, the body lock position. And another re nice job Pick popping up, up to the feet right there. Split the grip. One, Stays with him. Two, now you're in that green. crackdown position there. Oh. Notice how he's trying to get the right oh. shoulder underneath. So riding time oh, is keep stopped. Wrestling, gentlemen, keep wrestling. What you don't want to do is give up a reversal here. You got to continue to wrestle here. And the gallows continue to roll. Now they get a stoppage. Gallows is starting to really pick up his intensity in the bottom position. He comes to his feet right away. He's hand fighting. He's got the grip split. Gives up the two on one now. Ragus and working himself back up. And you know, here's the. The conditioning part of this match here may start to show up at the end of the second period with all these flurries. Ragason, a guy who thought he might have been redshirting about a couple weeks ago. The gal always knew he was going to be in the lineup. Down to 10 seconds. The gal pops his head to the outside. He's looking for a reversal late. Hanging on for dear life. I believe a locked hands call. One point match, your third period, All we're right, neutral. So green, so green neutral, right? All right, here we go. Set. Michigan starts the third period, neutral position. And Ragason here, Jim, does not go on bottom of Nagao as the Nitty Lion darts in on the leg. Good job of countering that by Ragason. Looked like he had it really close. I'm, I'm Ragason getting, riding time near two minutes. Getting impressed with Nagao's leg attacks. Neutral. Ragason undefeated. Check. Michigan State Open, Cleveland State Open, and Midlands champion. Top 10 matchup here at 133. You know, again, what we talked about, just mentioned it briefly, but you know, two weeks ago you were thinking about redshirting the whole season, and now you're out there in the lineup and you, know, you have a big Midlands tournament and is your conditioning there? It's just maybe a little bit different than being, you know, going from the early part of the season all the way through. 
Nagao looks pretty fresh out there right now physically. Shot once again from Nagao, but right into those hips of Ragason. On his shoot tops and the stalemates. Oh. Nice shot from He's got it. off the whistle. He's got to continue to go ahead. Drives up, comes out, tries to scoop the bottom leg, but I thought he had an opportunity to go ahead and just work over off to his right and go with the double leg action. He's got the riding time locked up. Down to 30 seconds. Both guys trying to get a little bit of elevation right now. No control. Bear hug no position control. here for no Nagao. Is he going to try to work this? It's a perfect opportunity to go ahead, but he takes his hips back. Down to 15 seconds. Ragason trying to remain undefeated. Yep, Nagao's going to Nagao's going to go basically going 5-5. Five, 5-5, five. Five, five. we're going to sudden victory. So here we go, two minutes sudden victory. Nagal's only lost to Ryan Crookham of Lehigh. Here's another attack. Pops his head to the outside. It's really a good position to be able to finish this. Oh, wow. And the Matt Ragason gets the fall. We'll be back with more top matches on Wrestling in 60. Here at number four. True freshman Tyler Kasak and Kayla Bracci for the Hawkeyes. Great work from Bo Bartlett, takedown in the first, and then gets another one late to put that dub on ice. Yeah, this is, Bracci's in a tough situation here. Crowd Tyler's practically favorite. silent. You never hear that. You know, this it's just quiet. you and I talking, okay? <laughs> they can Very hear us. rarely can I hear myself in this arena. Yeah, and it's just, this guy, Tyler Kasich, we saw him earlier against, in the year against Lehigh. Remember that, where he just kind of got that lead, maybe just got one takedown, but just wrestled kind of the last two and a half, uh, last period and a half, two and a half minutes, where he wasn't really kind of getting after it here, and he kind of walked off the mat a little bit disgusted with himself. But uh, I can tell you this, that he has improved immensely, and it's just a guy going out there and getting reps. You know, he's in there with, you know, Shane Van Ness with his injury that he had. Hope he's getting better. But uh, all the, the reps that he's getting right now, and, and I thought he just looked fantastic in that match against Ohio State. Knocked off All-American Dylan D'Amelio, 7-2 last Friday night. Began the season at 141. As you mentioned, that injury to All-American Shane Vaness. The true freshman gets the opportunity out of Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem Catholic, where he won a state title. Just last year, an Ironman champion won the Beast. Here he is inside Carver Hawkeye Arena on the big stage. Scoreless midway through this first period. Heavy on that collar tie as Kasich just this, likes go. to stay out in front of you. We'll go ahead and, and shut that straight on double leg right now. Look for a little elbow pass situation right here. Stalemate. Uh, referee blows the stalemate. In dual meet wrestling, Kasich has scored six takedowns. He's yet to give up a takedown. Jim. Listen to this stats. Projected starters for Penn State tonight in dual meets. They've scored 191 takedowns and given up 16. You can't make this stuff up. Well, that's why you lock yourself into your hotel room here for most of the day, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm out greeting people. I love the numbers. Failed freshman algebra, but I'm good yeah. at arithmetic. 45 to go in the first. Kasek, collar tie. These guys ear to ear, center of the mats. Rachi from Ankeny, Iowa, four-time finalist, two-time Iowa State champion. Then a really good job, 13 and three, eight bonus point victories, two and two in Big Ten duels for the Hawks. Star hey, beautiful little shot right there. Well timed. Came, down, came off of that ankle pick though, went right to the Star single leg, now he's trying to shelf the leg. This is Big Jim, 15 seconds in the first. Three, that's two last points. Three, three takedown in short time. Trying to work up. Four. Get off of it. 
And Rachi will finish this period on top. 3-0 off the whistle. Sinks in a claw. Going to work in the top Drop position. One, Ankle pick. Two. He's up. You know, Rachi just wrestle. needs to make this environment work for him. Just fight every little situation right now. A nice job there. At the Black Knight Open. 4-1 score. See if it Kasich hits a little more touch and go action right there. You see Rashi inside bicep tie. Kasich coming over the top. Inside, he's beating to the inside every time. Rashi's beating Kasich to the inside. Now a little advantage here for Rashi. Can he follow it up? Not getting much pressure back to take that shot. So you got to increase your footwork. Get a little motion going. Kasich's got a nice shock. 50 seconds, second period. Really tough now, ear to ear. Both guys can feel everything that these opponents going to do, and the referee, Jaron Quincy, has called a good match at this point right now. All right, man, let's go. Calls a quick Set. stalemate. Rachi had a great soldier salute, won the title. He was the outstanding wrestler. No, oh, beautiful good counter shot. shot. Once again, turns it across. It's going to be another takedown for Rachi. He may not be aware of it right now, so he got a good mat return as well. 6-1 score. Inside of 30 seconds, looking for that ride out once again. Leg in right there. Boy, case like really exploding uh, back up, but I don't know if he one. got away. Yep, he did. They definitely wanted to keep him down in this last 15 seconds. With a good answering escape here by Kasich. He really put himself in jeopardy to do so and was rewarded for it. Two takedowns for Rachi. Two escapes for Kasek. 6-2 to the third period. Here's that second takedown. Love the counter shot action here. Action by Kasek and then the counter shot. And look at him step up. Laces up, driving through his opponent right there. And here's the end of the sequence right there. Kasek, see that arm all the way across the back like that? Yeah, he's out. No question about it. Good call. Great call. Rachi goes on bottom, looking to add to his lead. <laughs> Work here. So now the question, Jim, is for Kasak, how long do you ride him? Yeah, I, I, he, he does have the ability, and he broke that match open against Ohio State with the, some back points. So he does have the ability off the mat return to suck him back and get back points, but I think he's in your camp here. Drive it off. Oh, beautiful Slide job. Here, and he's right back into this match as they Danger scramble green. on the edge. Danger green. Good job by Rachi staying with it, but they're going to collect three, the three right. right there, and that makes it 7-5. Riding time and on factor. And he in the Penn State corner telling Kasek to give the escape. Yeah, good read by Kasek. Yo, he's all the way across the mat. The Penn State uh, corner is way back over there on the other side. He looked to his corner and said, told him to let him up. Now he's got time to work. 60 seconds left in this third period. Watch the right tie here for Kasek. Just straight on drive. Watch this right here. He gets any pressure back, he's going to whip him right there. See that little elbow shuck right there? There's a stall call on Rachi, yep. and Kasek with a leg attack. He's in good shape right here on a double leg. Hit to the outside. Three more, and this match is tied 8 8. Tied 8 8, and he's good enough to stay in that top position right there. He's got both legs pinched. And now the Penn State corner telling him, keep him down. Yeah, they're at the Penn State corner. You see the coaches What's in the, the background there. And Rachi really trying to kick like he's. Butterfly kick right there like a swimmer, letting the official know he's in a total parallel ride. Ten seconds left. Hands are peeled. Peeling that bottom hand right there. Now make the turn in. There's a roll Good anticipated job. there by Kasak. Good job, and by this match is going to sudden victory. Well, I tell you what, a lot of fun, 8-8. Eight, eight. Good work. Now who gets right back after their offense? Both these guys with a pair of takedowns. You know, Rachi had that beautiful power shot. Is that available look, again? And for Kasich, it's constant pressure. 
Keep that constant pressure marching him forward. Tension here inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. The Let's Go Hawks chance. Yeah. Tell you what, if you're cheering for Rachi, you know that counter shot is still there. With the inside bicep tie, if he can get, now he's coming off the collar. Right there, that's there. Shot here from Rachi, oh, slow leg. Shin Rizzo, good job of stepping out of that. Now he moves out of it. He takes a scramble, and there's the three takedown. Rachi wins. Like I said, Shane, I thought that shot was there. Be back with more top matches on Wrestling in 60. And now we'll look at number three as we continue the countdown. Lemley ranked 19th in the country, 12 and 4 record off to a really good start. Six and one in duels, three and one in the Big Ten. He doesn't back down, Jim. Yeah, and he's up against one of these guys who will, will make a lot of really good wrestlers back down. Real Woods, nice job of stepping back in there. Lemley trying to go ahead, overhook to that leg. Now he does a great job of squaring up. Puts a front headlock. Yeah, puts himself in great position to maybe score. He's gonna run out of little real estate. That was a great series by Lemley. Real Woods, three-time All-American. National finalist last March in Tulsa fell to Andrew Alirez in that national final, six to four. Of course, came to Iowa from Stanford. And Lemley going right after that two-on-one. I think he's established that he wants to basically try to control Real Woods from the elbow down, right, make this a grabby type match. Understand, Real is from distance right there. He'll go ahead and pat those hands on the mat, try to get a reaction, and he has an explosive double leg. Woods did not wrestle last weekend in the duels against Illinois and Northwestern. It was Brody Teske, as I mentioned, bumping up from 133. Both from Illinois, though, both three-time Illinois state champions. Lemley did not wrestle last week at Columbus a couple of weeks ago. Tight match with Bo Bartlett of Penn State. And then he beat Mitch Moore. 10 7 and sudden victory of Rutgers in the Wolverines win over the Scarlet Knights. Halfway through this first period, what stands out through 90 seconds, Jim? Well, I, what stands out to me is that uh, Real Woods basically doing what he always does. He likes to take territory. Even though he's not getting the perfect tie that he likes there, he is moving forward. And I think Lemley's doing a very good job of handling it. You know, it's clear that he's on his defense right now, Lemley is. But, uh, you know, Woods taking territory, and he needs to continue to do that throughout the match. He can't get into, you know, settle and, you know, okay, you won that position. I'm going to stop what I'm doing best and come back and take territory, make an impression on that official. See how it's, the action has kind of slowed down a little bit here, and Woods is a little bit less, you know, into taking territory. There's a little nice little drag attempt. Now we got a lot of rustling inside Here's the logo. Shot from Woods. Yeah, great job. Lemley putting weight on that head. See how that head buckled right there? He's keeping weight in the right spot here, so Woods has a difficult time. Now he's coming out the back door. Waterfall position here with Lemley draped over the Hawkeye. Yeah, but, but this seems like Lemley knows what he's doing here is keeping his feet close to the ears there. Trying to come up over the top as Real Woods to cut some corner. Beautiful job by Lemley just staying with it. He's got to keep his chest up at the lower end of the back. Now he hips into him. Now he's got him a little bit of trouble. Down to 10 seconds. How and about Lemley. Lemley? Lemley goes on bottom here, second period. And this is where Real Woods is so tough. He had to work real hard in that situation there where he's trying to finish that technique. We'll see if that affects his riding in the top position at all. Really good with this head lever, Shane. See that? Great right. with these tilts. He's huge for Lemley if he's able to escape. Okay, the wrist is trapped right there. The wrist is trapped. There's a roll, and right back into Woods. And he's got him on his back. He's got him on his back, Jim. Here come the near fall. This is going to be a six-point move for Sergio Lemley. Gonna sink in an arm bar. And listen to this crowd, the true freshman puts up a six spot, two reversal, 
and four in the pockets. You notice how you're rewarded. He's, got, he's working for that half Nelson over there on the right hand side. We'll see if he can collect it. Got a good wing and basically Woods trying to collect himself at heads down. He's got an arm bar in an opposite side half. I think he should be better off going on the half Nelson side, but I th what he's trying to do as much as anything is make real Woods work. Six nothing, make it six one with the escape. We got ourselves a fight here at 141. 30 seconds, 30 seconds remaining in the period. Shot here from Real Woods, but again, good defense. Lemley squares up. Down to 15 seconds. You know, Real Woods had to scramble real hard at the end of that first period, and of course that action right there giving up the six-point move. You know, you're just trying to collect yourself at this point in time, and now he finds himself with one period to go. Lemley with a huge amount of momentum. Easily had the four swipes. Quick stand up from Woods. Peels the fingers, but Lemley stays with him. There's a good turn from Woods. Gets the hip separation and escapes. Six to two match. Long way to go in this one. With a three-point takedown. Lemley's not out of danger right there. He's got to continue to wrestle. Right? And that's what you see from him there. A little dresser dump action. He's looking for his offense. You mentioned this before, Shane. These guys are wrestling in the logo. Lemley from Chesterton, Indiana. He's a four-time high school state champion. Wow. Look at this. A Metzger. Almost. Gosh, I've been waiting for that to come back. Just continuing to stalk and wrestle as Sergio Lemley. He's got Real Woods against the ropes here in the third. He was able to get that right-handed underhook right there, and, and Woods reacted to it, came right into a Metzger. Woods did everything he could. Now it's just kind of a dropping in type of shot here. Not a lot of energy for Woods. Lemley anticipates and defends. And if he can break this wrist free, he wants to get that right wrist free, though, oh boy. Illegal. Illegal move right there. That's Woods illegal. losing Can't some composure here. This would be the biggest win of his career. Just a true freshman. Look for Lemley to work that right-handed underhook. Only found Woods out of position when he got to it. And now with just over 30 seconds right there. to go, Woods got to be thinking something big. Right there. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. As Woods blocking off at this stage right there. He wants to stay with that. You know, it was a big move, but there was a lot of little things that happened in this match that made Woods really work harder than he needed to. And now he's got a cradle. Nothing. Nothing. Sergio Lemley going to put Real Woods on his back again in the Four. final 10 Two. seconds. Three. Looking Four. for the fall. That's it. Wrestling in 60 is brought to you by Defense Soap. Only two matches to go. Here is our pick in the runner-up spot. Jim, this is the 10th time these two have met in their careers. They woke up this morning, both of them, and went, here we go again. Yeah, I tell you what, when their careers are over with here this year, that they'll They'll have, probably have a moment, and it's possible they could meet another two or three times, maybe four times. Both these guys, two-time All-Americans. Barnett, five and one at Big Ten dual meets. He's been so durable in that Badger singlet, three straight years with over 20 victories. Jim, wrestling for the 10th time in their careers, what are you looking for in the first minutes of 90 seconds? Well, it's, it's, it's more than just a chess match. These guys have felt each other before. I think there's a, there's a calm that develops when you know your opponent and you know that kind of some of his tendencies, you felt it. You felt that shot right there, a little fireman's carry action right there for Barnett, but he comes into a situation where basically McKee Squats down in here, trying to turn the corner. He's trying to bury that right shoulder of Barnett. Barnett trying to lift that shoulder up. He gets the right arm across, and he'll score points. Barnett scores the first three points. And what you got to be careful with both these guys, they're so tough in the top position, they go immediately into the turn. McKee leads the series 5-4. to four. The Gopher has pinned the Badger three times. Last year at the Big Tens, Jim, 
McKee pinned Barnett in the quarters, and then Barnett came back to beat him five to four for fifth place. Yeah, that's some wild matches here between these two. This won't be the last of the scoring. You said it, Jim. Both these guys really good in that top position. Yeah, hand fighting there by McKee. He's uh, comes back up, gets a quick escape. So the nice answering escape there by McKee. Of course, McKee, that great run at the 2021 national tournaments, was a 15 C, lost in the second round, won six straight to finish third. That was really something, wasn't it? You know, just that shows how gritty that McKee can be out there. You know, in a tournament, you get beat early in it, and you all come all the way back, winning six consolation matches like that. Mentioned McKee, a three-time Minnesota State Champion. Barnett, a three-time Wisconsin State Champion. For Chris Genrich at Hortonville High School, he's from Greenville, Wisconsin, is Barnett. Just over 30 seconds left. The Badger are up three to one. First period takedown here for Barnett. Trying to even this series at five apiece. Coming inside collar tie there. Dropping off of that. Coming hard with that collar tie is Barnett on the left-hand side. That's usually the, the, it's also tying up the elbow. Final seconds here in this first period. So we are set to go. Barnett starting period on bottom. And McKee flirting with some back points, Jim. Well, he did, didn't get that there, but now Barnett's in a good position to be able to finish. He's stepping up there, has the outside leg, got his head buried a little bit. We'll see he's gonna eventually try to lift. And McKee goes into that chest wrap. We've seen that a lot from him all throughout his career. Him and his brother, Mitch. Yeah, and, they, and using it to his advantage, possibly, to get a little more riding time, breaking the riding time back down. Now he steps over that height, that, uh, that seat belt position. Barnett gets the escape. 4-1 score. McKee last year, sixth at the Big Tens, was 2-2 two and two at the tournaments as an 11 seed. That after a fifth place finish in 2022 in Detroit. One ten second period. There it is. Here's nice a shot, shot here from McKee. He's in deep. Yep. Wasn't able to go ahead and get the right arm across though, Shane. He's got an opportunity to go ahead and see Barnett's giving a little territory. His butt's already on the outside of the line right there. Actually, John Thorne got the boys going here, and the McKees were able to benefit from that. I think it, uh, uh, McKee's uh, father was also a part of that uh, kid program as well. He, he uh, passed away a few years back, so he's, St. Michael Albert's been a lot, uh, been a lot to the Minnesota program over the years. Now, another shot back. here from McKee. He's got Barnett on his hips again. He steps across. Here they scramble. Love what he did there. See how he broke off the leg chain? Gonna get the takedown, and here comes the near fall. And he gets the fall, he does! We'll reveal the number one match when Wrestling in 60 returns. Over the last hour, we've been counting down the most competitive Big Ten matches. Here is our pick at number one. Another one of these freshmen going against these multi-year guys, <laughs> senior, six-year guys. Lucas Davison, sixth year, spent five years at Northwestern. Three-time All-American, once at 197, last two years at heavyweights. Sixth in 2022, fifth last March in Tulsa. Davison, fifth the last two years at the Big Tens, of course, in that Northwestern Wildcats singlets. And Feldman, the red shirt freshman, ranks 16th in the country. Get out, Get out, of, the out, of, the out of the grip. Out of the grip. Feldman, Jim, 18 wins, 14 bonus point victories, 12 tech falls. This guy can put some points on the board. He really can for a big man. But, you know, does a good job of moving and, and finishes strong in his, his matches. And I tell you, going back to the freshman senior thing here, what a great opportunity here to build on when you're throwing this many young guys out here into the fire against this many All-Americans, and they're showing up well. 
Michigan leading at 19-17. You know, if you're in this match here, if you're Tom Ryan coaching a guy, you sit there and go, okay, you know, stay in it, right? Become a tough out, right? Move the head a little bit like that. You don't necessarily have to do anything wild in the beginning. Heavy hands and make it, make, you know, just see if there's any flaw, a little chink in the armor here. Conditioning might not be the right where it needs to be here, but you gotta search out your opponent here and make him work. And for, you know, the experience of Davison, he can attack below the knee. He's also an excellent rider here for, you know, 225, uh, 230 pound man. He can be able to control guys in the top position, gets out quickly. So that experience like we saw before with Shane Griffith at 174, where he's able to go ahead and you know, get the Griff ride on it, that, 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 that five and six year experience is really where it comes into play is on the top position. Against these talented freshmen. Davison, a runner up at the Cliff Keen Invitational fell to younger Bastido oh. of Iowa State, and here's Feldman with an attack. Sly dog right there by Davison. He was caught right there. Now he has an advantage. Now, but oh, but great job by Can't Davison like and reflexes. Feldman. Really, well, both guys in that situation, what they were able to do. You look at this weight class. Greg Kirkfleet ranked number one, followed by Wyatt Hendrickson, the aforementioned younger Bastida. Lucas Davison here at four, and Colton Schultz of Arizona State ranked fifth in the country. I mean, there are some hammer some athletes at heavyweight. I always joke, Jim, these aren't your father's heavyweights. <laughs> this is a different breed. Look at that slickness from Davison on a single leg. But does he have enough time? And he does that roll through right there. Feldman squaring up. Scoring made 0-0. Zero, zero. Here goes Feldman. We've had some bottom exciting. In the second period. We've had some exciting exchanges here between these two guys on their feet. And there's the experience of Davison in the top position. This is going to be a big part in this match. Can Feldman get away from Davison? Notice how he's scooping up on that near leg right there. And once again, like what we saw with Welsh at, at 74, kind of your head goes down a little bit. You've, you've never felt this before. You've been the bigger athlete, the stronger guy in high school. You're moving up in competition. And you, you got a guy constantly putting you back on your hands and head. Give us a level set as to what that's like. Well, you're not used to it, but you know, you're normally in this situation as a, as a youngster in high school, you had nobody challenging you. You were the, you were the best athlete. You were the, one of the top rated guys, but now he comes to his feet. Huge Look at that, that return. return from Davison. It shook this place. Scoops up the leg one more time. And when, you know, what are you going to do after one mat return? It may take four or five, and you're not used to that type of intensity. And you've got a guy like Davidson who's kind of Action, spreading the gentlemen. table out a little Action. bit. Head goes down. That was a Feldman. textbook return from yeah. Davidson. Really did a nice job of popping his hips up. And you know it's good when the angle is the shoulders are lower than the, than the feet going down. That's a good mat return. Just bumping him forward, keeping the weight on the hands of Feldman. What I need to do is give you like a, 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 a sign that gives it, whether it was an 8 or a 10 or that a 9. That was a good nine, one. Right? That, was, <laughs> that might be a 10. Sinks in a deep claw ride. 90 seconds of riding time in the second period. There is a stall call on Davison. for another one right here. They're out of bounds. Equalizer. That's a stall call, Jim. Yep. And that's the second one, so Feldman gets a point. This becomes so big. 23 seconds left for Feldman. Can he find a way to get away? The battle's within the battle. This is huge in the final 20 seconds. Feldman pops to his feet. You got to do a quick little change over there. But now he tries to roll through. He might get a reversal here. Nope. Nope. If that's the second time that Davison's been able to cling on to an ankle, create a little elevation, and turn in, and he's going to end up finishing the period in the top position. Takes that's riding boys. time to the two minutes. He rode Feldman the entire period. Good flurry to close the frame. Yeah. 
he rolls through and just if he could have kicked him out a little bit further and cleared his legs out here he could have had a reversal but still Tom Ryan was hoping for it Sean Bourmet enjoying himself <laughs> Okay, 1-1 one, one as we wrestle neutral. Grip. Out of the grip. Close stop. Finger. Close stop. We'll Got head out to Champagne at the conclusion of this match with Zach Mackey and Tim Johnson. Iowa, Illinois. Shot from Feldman. Good recovery there from the Buckeye to not get stalled underneath. And Shane, Feldman's a lefty, okay? That's a little bit different feel for a lot of guys that are out there. You can tell that uh, Davison likes to, you know, that right hand shot, that right hand single leg right there. Now he follows through. And he's Cuts got it. the takedown. Feldman leading it 4-1. That's, that's huge. He hasn't been warned for stalling either. He can go out there and hold position. Working on an underhook is Davison. That, again, that left hand, that left legged lead right there is really to an advantage here. We saw where Davison waved at that single leg. And this place is getting loud. Final minutes. Feldman trying to knock off the fourth ranked heavyweight in the country and give the Buckeyes the come from behind win. Shot here from Davison. Feldman, nice job to square up. Nice job of blocking out right there. He's got to get a little more footwork with it as well. Davidson coming with the shots hard. Look for him to go ahead and hit some sort of a free shot. Break free and hit that double. Feldman doing a nice job, but to the center, keeping territory. Beautiful job. Inside collar tie with that left arm right there. Watch Feldman come to the inside right there. Right there. That's that collar tie that's going to keep him out of that shot. Touch and go here. Davidson doesn't have a lot of time because he's going to need some time to finish it. Down to 15 seconds. Oh my God. The crowd can feel it. There's a stall call on Feldman as there's a shot from Davidson. Down to five seconds. Single leg from Davidson. Can he finish? Not going to happen. The Buckeyes over the Wolverines. What a match for Feldman. A new legend in the Buckeye singlet was just made. He has done it again. We hope that you enjoyed this edition of Wrestling in 60, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic.